Jaden Coleman, long three, puts it in. Tulane back in front. Jaden Coleman with a career high 14. Kendrick Davis locked up by Baker. Can't shake him. Outside a nut all stolen away. Tylen Pope to the rack. Tulane needs a three with five. With four. Forbes open for three. Got it for the tie with 2.1. Temple no timeouts. Strickland for the win. And we're going to overtime in New Orleans. You're watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN+. Plus. Lots of buzz these days in the Big Easy, not only for Mardi Gras, but for Tulane basketball. A golden opportunity tonight for the surging green wave, 9-5 in the American, welcoming in the 14th ranked Houston Cougars at 22-4. David Grubb and Jack Benjamin with you inside Avern B. Fulgerman Arena in the Devlin Fieldhouse. They've packed this place. Tulane 6 and 1 this year in conference home games, looking for a signature win against the number 14 team in the country. Freeman for Perry, that's a three. Ooh. Oh, CJ Walker, look out below. The floater's a little short, gets the rebound yeah. and puts it in. Sandy Ryan with the first points of his college career. The former walk-on student manager gets a basket in the two-lane home finale on senior day. It is Mardi Gras here in New Orleans, courtesy of Cartazzo's Bakery and Kenner. Some king cake. Look who got the baby. I got the baby, so I owe you one. I owe you <laughs> one. The next one's on me. There we go. We've been munching on this the uh, the entire break. My biggest takeaway in that first half, what did Quincy Anna McCoy have for breakfast? Houston's taking its largest lead of this game of eight points. 14th ranked team in the country trying to pick up win number 23, hoping to move to 12-2 and two in the American Athletic Conference. Here are their ranks defensively. Nothing new, year in, year out. One of the most elite top 10 in opponent scoring. Number one nationally in field goal defense. This is the way Kelvin Sampson has built this program to sustain itself on the defensive end of the floor. And you look at the profile of his players. They are extremely athletic. They are very disciplined in their defensive assignments. You don't see a lot of reaching. And then they have the length and physicality to frustrate players. So he's got all the components that you're going to need to have a good defense without having to resort to any gimmicks or things like that. Fabian White misses that free throw. Houston now just two for six as a team at the line. White became the winningest player in program history against UCF. He passed a guy named Michael Young. You might know him. Was pretty good on those uh, five slam and jam teams back in the 80s. Yeah, he might have been the best jumper on the team, including Clyde Drexler. And that is saying something. A group that made three straight Final Fours, a couple of national title game appearances. Nine-point lead for Houston. Can Tulane get back in this in front of the home crowd? Cross takes some contact. That's a foul on Carlton. And we talked about rolling the dice. That is number four, picks it up at the 15-13 mark. Yeah, you really <laughs> rolled the dice with Carlton. He had a great impact in these first five minutes, but now four fouls. Do you seek him out? Like you said earlier, do you seek him out defensively? It's almost as if Carlton is putting himself into these positions. Now they've got Juwan Roberts waiting at the scorer's table as Cross makes that first free throw. Not like there was a steep drop off in that first half. All Roberts did was give him six points, seven rebounds, and four on the offensive glass. But still, you're losing Carlton, who's your second leading scorer and the number four rebounder in the American Athletic Conference. And Houston's gotten some great production from these secondary guys, just even not with points, but just in their activity. And that's been huge. Two free throws for Cross. He's four for four today. He's made his last 19 free throws. Tulane needs to stop in the worst way. Down seven with 15 to go. Trying to win against a ranked team in this building for the first time in nearly 25 years. Shed, drop off to Roberts. Kyler Edwards knocks down a three. He has been sensational. 13 points, a third triple, and it's back to 10. Do I have to say it again? They left the corner open. He's made him pay a bunch. Forbes turns the corner and throws it down. 
a statement dunk by Jalen Forbes. I think that's a message to his own team to continue to be aggressive. Can that get them rejuvenated? Can they get a stop? Fabian White, the answer is no. A little flex running back down the floor. He's put in 10, and the lead back to 10. Cookshausen again. Oh, he's got another one. Well, he doesn't need a whole lot of space, does he? You know, as Coach Schroyer told you and me a couple of days ago, he is the best pure shooter he's ever coached. He's showing us why this afternoon. Cop can't answer. Muwaka an offensive rebound. This is Davion Buster. And now Sullivan against Rosario. Giving up some size, and that's a foul. Watch Cookhausen here. He's got two quick threes. What a terrific release. Gets the ball off at the high point of his extension. Just a terrific offensive talent. Beyond just the quick release, what do you see from him as a shooter? What makes him so lethal? Well, he's always ready to shoot the ball as soon as he gets it. He's in what I call the ready position, and a good shooter has to do that because you know the defense is going to be focused on him. 125 threes last year led the NCAA. First Cowboy in the Division I era to top the nation in a stat category. So He had eight threes in the game earlier this year already. He had ten in the game last year. Uh-huh. Yeah, and think about that. He made 10 in a game, Buster made 11. <laughs> we got two of the top three-point shooters in the country right here today. Southland Conference hoops at its best. Three-point lead for McNeese. Back and forth we go early in Beaumont. Big game for both teams seeking a second conference win.